Hello everybody, in this video we're going to look at managing complexity with functions when you're doing the APCSP create task. And in here we're going to do a speed run create task and PPR. Alright, let's get going. Our goal is going to be to understand one of AP's required learning objectives, which is to explain how the use of procedural abstraction manages complexity in a program. In this video, I'm going to assume that you already know how your list is managing complexity and you already know the stuff about iteration, selection, sequencing, and parameters in your function. If you're not sure, then you might want to check out my other videos first. All right, as promised, here's a brand new create task code for me. This code calculates your average grade in two scenarios. The first scenario is just straight up. And the second scenario is if you take any grade that is under 50 and round it up to 50, which is something that some schools do these days. And so the purpose of this code, which is something that all create tasks need to have, is to see how the grades turn out under both systems. So the first thing I need is input, instructions from input, and I have it right here. I have an input from keyboard with the prompt telling me what I'm supposed to type. And so this first one here is good. Next, I need a list, and I actually have multiple lists here, but the one I'm going to use is my float grades list right here. This list manages complexity because on this line right here, I have to loop through a whole bunch of items in that list but I don't know how many items in the list I need to loop through. And if I tried to do this with individual variables instead, I guess I could set a lot of blank empty variables to zero corresponding to each grade, add them all up, but that would make a code with a lot of unused variables or potentially not enough variables. And being able to loop through the list, especially when I don't know how many items I need to loop through, the code with the list is going to be a lot less complex. Next, I need a procedure or a function. It has a name. In this case, I have a return and it has two parameters. So that one is good also. My procedure or function needs to have sequencing, selection, and iteration, and it does. My procedure or function needs to be called and it's called right here. And the output, the output is just right here. It prints out the grade in two ways. One, just straight away. And two, if I've rounded up all my scores that are under 50 to a 50. So as you can see, all the requirements are met. So now I'll speed run the PPR. Remember, the PPR is four screenshots of your code. So the first screenshot is procedure.1, which is just your procedure or the function. Here it is. You'll want your screenshot to have line numbers. Screenshot two is procedure.2, and that is your function being called. Again, you'll want to have line numbers. In the ideal world, you'll highlight where your function is being called, and you'll provide some context around the code. In our simulations answering questions from this PPR, we found that having line numbers and having context around the code definitely helped a lot. If you have two functions, be sure that the screenshot for procedure.2 is calling the procedure or function that you screenshotted in procedure.1. They need to refer to the same thing. Question list.1 will want to have a screenshot of our list or dictionary or object being created, but not an empty one, one that's populated. So here I have a screenshot of my list being created and then my list being populated. What you can't have is just an empty list or just an empty dictionary. And the final screenshot, list.2, you want to show your list being used. You have to make sure it's the same list as you're talking about in list.1. In this particular case, they have different names. So if I had a question about this, I might have to talk about how list.1 makes the list outside of the function. The list gets passed in to the function as an argument, and that's why it has a different name in list.2. And you'll want this showing of this list, the screenshot in list.2, this screenshot needs to show how you're managing complexity of the code with your list. So again, this list being used has to be better than if you didn't use a list, if you used individual variables instead. Okay, so now we're going to look at how procedures and functions manage complexity of your program. This kind of thing is a potential question on your APCSP exam. So a lot of kids will ask, what is managing complexity? So when it comes to this question, what we're looking to do is compare your code with and without the function now, and then we're looking to compare the code with and without the function in the future, and basically ask the question, where is the win by using the function? So my first win is going to be to increase the readability of my code in the main part of my code. So if I just look at the main parts of my code, right here highlighted, you see the difference. In the code with a function, you're looking at the main part that says grade calculator, which describes exactly what's going on, versus without the function, you're looking at code that has seven lines of basically random code that you have to decipher on the fly. This concept has a name. 
It's called abstraction. And this is an AP term that you'll want to know. And basically, it's whenever we substitute something simple for something complicated. So if I say chocolate chip cookie recipe versus all this stuff, you know, the ingredients and the temperature and all that stuff here on the right, that is an example of abstraction. Again, I'm substituting in something simple for something complicated. An abstraction is going to make the main part of my code easier to read. And if for some reason in the future, as I add more and more functions, this readability difference is going to get really, really, really significant. So summarizing, by using functions, I gain now and in the future readability in the main part of my code. The second way procedures or functions will help me manage my code complexity is through parameters. So here on the left, I have my code with my function in this main part of my code. I'm calling this function twice with different arguments. And if I tried to write this code without the function, it would look like this on the right. Basically, I have to write the function part of the code twice, which is bad. So right now, at this moment, the parameters are going to allow me to reuse my code so that I don't have to code twice. And in the future, if I update or bug fix my code, I only have to change it in the one spot in the function instead of everywhere where I would have ran the code. So for example, if I make a mistake in my sum, I would have to change it here if I have a function, but I have to change it here and here if I do not. So this concept of code reuse, not only does it make my coding easier, but it makes my changes easier because I only have to make those changes in one spot. The next way functions are going to help us manage complexity is by splitting up big problems, which are really, really hard to solve, into small problems, which are solvable. So here I've rewritten my code. This is a version two. It runs in a loop until I type N. And this code, as it's written, basically has two hard parts to program. The first is the function itself, and the second is this loop here. There are a lot of ways to screw this loop up. So as I'm writing the code, I can write my function. I can test my function with known test cases. And separately from that, I can write my loop and test my loop with known test cases. And after they're tested, I can put them back together to assemble the code as a whole. It's a similar concept to building rockets. You would never just try to build a rocket from the ground up. You would instead split that rocket up into many different components, test each of these components, and then assemble the whole thing at the end. So this technique, splitting up big problems into small problems, allows me now to take a problem that's unsolvable and turn it into problems that are solvable. And in the future, it is now very easy to add on to my code. All I've got to do is add functions that I know that work and then call those functions as part of my main code. Finally, I want to go over the most common mistake we see, by far and away the most common mistake we see, and that is this. The function is basically the entire code. So it's basically this highlighted here. There's almost nothing else in the main part of the code, and there's no other functions. So on the left, we have the code with the function, and on the right, we have the code without the function. And why is this setup on the left bad? If you look at these side by side, you see that there's no gain to writing the function. You could have written the whole code without the function, and it would have been almost exactly the same. And if you do that, the function does not manage the complexity of the code. And so if you get a question along these lines from the AP board, you're going to miss that question. So again, you don't want to submit something where your function is basically your entire code, and you have one or maybe two lines of code at the bottom calling this function. So then you may ask, well, Dr. Wu, uh, this is actually what I did. What do I do now? How do I get myself out of this predicament? And my recommendation to you is that you go back and you look at my fourth example where I split big problems into small problems. And I recommend that you write a loop and you call the function in the loop. You can say I've split the code up into two sections, two testable sections. And now this function manages the complexity of my code. Because the function now helps split up my code from one big chunk into multiple smaller chunks that are individually testable. So just to reiterate, if your function is basically your entire code, that is bad. And if you've done this already, I would make a loop in the main part of my code that calls my function over and over again, as long as I continue in that loop. All right, so that's pretty much it. Hope that was useful to you. And if it was, please give this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.